And uh, in order to keep myself relevant in an attempt to make this channel a bit more relevant and mainstream, I will focus most of my abilities trying to review some more contemporary devices. So feast your eyes on the bread and butter of the smartphone world, the literal glass and metal sandwich design. Pun most certainly intended. Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't help myself at poking a cheap joke YouTube style. So exhibit A, the first generation Galaxy A series, the A510 to be more specific, and its flagship sibling, the all-conquering S8. I don't really know where to begin with all this, so I will address construction. While the A5 has a sleek design, it's a bit generic and lacks flair, too predictable some might say. It's a rather slab of a phone, really a rectangular piece of design. Yeah, it's got some soft edges, some 2.D glass attempt here to make the screen edgier, more, uh, uh, more modern. But uh, it's a rather, well, boring design. To make matters worse, the materials used are not that resistant to wear. Only Gorilla Glass 4 on the front and back and the aluminium bezel, although it's all metal, this chassis bit, it dents pretty easily because it's, well, I don't think it's the higher grade aluminium, but rather the the softer one, so uh, as you can see there are marks here, uh, some on the corners here, um, um, it's, there's a big dent here in the middle, and these were caused rather early on in when I had this phone due to the lack of a case. By the way, interesting fact, when this phone was launched, uh, cases, more modern design cases, were just starting to appear and they were not that great. They, either they protected the corners but not much else or they were too chunky and robbed you of uh, any mobility. The S8, on the other hand, is, is more sleek, has better ergonomics, thinner bezels all round, rounded edges, uh, and the screen is also rounded, so Galaxy, uh, Samsung made a staple out of these um, um, overflowing uh, design screens. Anyway, I don't really consider this to be a plus, more of a gimmicky thing, you know, the classic design of the screen which flows over the, the edges the edge design basically because that's what it's called. I think it's a gimmick uh, and a bit of a drawback in terms of functionality and practicality but that's just me. This phone is better, the S8 is better in all regards, materials used, proportions, ergonomics, size, what have you. When compared to the A5 of the same generation. I'll just turn on the A5 as well and we'll continue with the review. Uh, by the way, the S8 has Gorilla Glass 5 and the uh, chassis is still made of aluminium, I believe, but it's a painted and UV cured uh, um, decorated um, uh, design, so the paint is UV cured and it's much more resistant to scratches and wears and stuff like that, so not a whole lot of dings or imperfections to this phone. I'll just um, do a quick pause and start rubbing these phones because they do get, they are fingerprint magnets after all, so sorry about that. I have greasy sausage fingers. I got the A5 right after its official launch in 2016 and I instantly fell in love with its sleek construction. Even though it wasn't a flagship, it had the right stuff. A huge, vibrant AMOLED display, a decent camera for the time, excellent construction, great reliability, and so on. I used it for about two years, but during all this time I did feel some hiccups in performance. 
the Exynos 7580 octa core 20 nanometer chipset just could not handle the workload and keep in mind I'm not a power user and this was not an obsolete device when I had it. As a side note, it did come with Android 5.1.1, the lollipop version, from the box and I did eventually upgrade it to uh, Android 7.0, the Nougat version. But alas, no improvement was achieved after this upgrade in software. The most I loved about this phone was the camera. It had some toned down colors. It gave photos almost a nostalgic sepia tone. Sands, beaches and water uh, got an interesting almost dreamy hue to them. Not very accurate but I find those pics charming. I don't know if you can relate. I'll just share some of them right now so you can see what I'm going on about. And after pondering for a bit with this um, A5, I decided to risk and switch to the S8. I'm going to explain, explain what, I, what I mean when saying risk because actually I was a bit worried in doing the switch. At the time I got, at the time I got the S8, it had already been a two-year-old design. Remember, I got the S5, I got the A5 in 2016, and the S8 was launched about the same time in the same year, anyway. So I wasn't wasn't really that sure that I did make an upgrade. Um, also, the budget was involved when I got the S8. It was still about 350 euros with a bit of discounted. Actually, this was a refurbished version, so it wasn't new. So it was a lot of money to invest in a phone, which actually was a two-year-old design, and I didn't know if it was, was going to work for me or not. Ooh. Should I, I thought to myself back then, should I buy a proper flagship but spend almost 700 euros of my hard work earned money or should I keep the A5 or should I go a different uh, route and buy some Chinese um, flagship killer, you know, the kind. I wasn't really sure what I should do, but I stuck with the S8 uh, and really there's no question about it. Real day-to-day -day performance for the S8 is simply miles ahead of the lesser A5. And to prove this theory I can say that I still use the S8 to this day and have been doing so for the last four years. I got loads on, of apps installed on it, even internet banking and it works like a charm. Uh, it's secure enough and it's stable enough in terms of software that I don't need anything else. I should point out again that I'm not a power user and really um, I cannot say uh, that you will be satisfied with this phone if you get it in 2010, 22. But for me and for a medium user I think it's quite fine. Assembly quality is on the same level as with the A5, but the metal chassis, as I've said, is better painted, it's more resistant to scratches and dings, and gaps between the parts seem to be tighter. Well, this should offer IP68 protection over the A5, which doesn't. And funny enough, I didn't really feel the urge to test this claim as I did with the X-Cover 2, the previous Android phone that I have owned before this, my first Android phone, which to which I will leave a link as I've made a review of that as well. So yeah, that's the that's my story of the A5 and S8. Also, I should point out that uh, the S8 has USB Type-C connection versus micro USB port for the A5. Uh, it's got an always on display option and wireless charging and all these amount to very important hardware features which are lacking in the A5. Chipset in the European S8 is an Exynos 
8895 10 nanometer platform with a Mali G71 MP20 GPU and is a significant and also has a significant upgrade in the display department compared to the A5. So it's got a 5.8 inch Super AMOLED HDR10 unit. Camera is also better in every aspect. I'll just take a photo right now so you can see what I mean. Yeah, again, this grime on the Samsung A5. I have to pause a bit to wipe it. Sorry about all the wobbly uh, sounds. <laughs> I'm actually using a three-point lighting system, but it's improvised, so all my gadgets are like that. So let's take a quick photo, hopefully without the light, without the light reflecting in the camera. So camera is also better in every aspect, improved filming resolution, better night photos, more stabilized image imaging, better focus performance, etc. I don't know if I prefer the vibrant colors of the S8 compared to the rather uh, blotchy hues, uh, romantic sized version of the A5. Uh, I think these uh, S8 picks are a bit overly saturated, but people seem to prefer this version. I don't really care all that much though. I do take a lot of pics with my phone, but mediocre ones. If I want to try my hand at artsy pics, I have the Lumix GH4 mirrorless camera, the one which I, with which I am filming right now, and a review to that little beast is in the works. And I am in all fairness impressed with the S8. Right now I could easily afford to get the latest generation flagship, I just don't see myself needing one. Plus. I love the headphone jack and I cannot find it on any other flagship newer than 2019 or so, which is rather a shame. I'm sure that most of you can relate to this. Really the only reason to switch to another phone right now would be battery performance and endurance, which on this S8 has taken a bit of a dive somewhat predictably. You cannot expect to run this thing through about 1500 cycles of charging and still get the same performance for 40 years onwards. I know I can replace it, but really I think that for me it's not, is not worth it. But for the near future I will still use the S8. So it really comes down to this. The 2016 phones, mid-rangers versus flagships. Worth the compromise for the mid-ranger based on budget options, but really based on my experience I would always opt for an older flagship any day of the week compared to a modern day mid-ranger. In all fairness, I don't really think I can speak about this, the 2022 uh, mid-rangers compared to 2020 um, flagships because Right now these A, A series Samsungs are supposed to be more competitive than ever, especially since Oppo and uh, OnePlus and a whole bunch of other companies are pretty aggressive in their price range and offerings. But anyway, speaking about 2016, I would still say the uh, S8 is relevant and the A5, well, not so much. Yeah, you could use it day to day, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. The S8 though, I think you could get a pretty decent phone even today. So there you have it. That's my review of this uh, rather interesting duo. Uh, I did appreciate and I still love the design. I'm not a huge fan of Android. The direction it's taking is not to my taste, but that's a discussion for another time.
thanks for watching and stay tuned for more uh, rather interesting and weird phones and gadgets from the past. See you in the next one.